our last video was about uh, the regression analysis in which we uh, learned how to uh, analyze regression models in SPSS. Uh, this video will teach us how to do the mediation and moderation analysis using SPSS. And in the SPSS, we will uh, especially be using Andrew and Hayes process macro for our mediation and moderation analysis. Now, before uh, we go and analyze our mediation and moderation models in SPSS and Andrew and Hayes process macro, it is very important to understand the types of variables, what are the mediating and moderating variables, what are the direct and indirect effects, and some other concepts related to the mediation and moderation analysis. So today's topic uh, are what are the different types of variables, what is a mediating and a moderating variable? We will try and differentiate between the two. Then what is mediation? And when we analyze mediation, what is the indirect, the direct, and the total effects in that mediation model? We will also learn what is the moderation at different levels of a moderator. This means that how to interpret the outcome of Andrew and Hayes uh, process macro when we are using the moderating analysis. Uh, and then we will also talk about what is a macro and how to use Andrew Hayes uh, macro in SPSS. This video is going to have two parts. In the first part, we will be trying and understanding the mediation and moderation and all the topics that we just discussed. And in the second part, we will be using SPSS to uh, do the mediation and moderation analysis. So. Let's learn about the different types of variables. So just to start with, let's uh, go with one of the examples. Suppose if you see that, let's take this example of smoking has a negative relationship with health. Now, what we are doing, we are just describing a theory, which means a relationship between two variables. What is a variable, first of all? Variable is something which has the capacity to vary when we move from one person to the other person or from one context to the other context. So let's suppose if smoking is our variable, when you ask different people how many cigarettes do they smoke, they're going to give you different answers. For example, one person is smoking, uh, for example, 20 cigarettes a day, the other is smoking 10 cigarettes a day, some people are not smoking at all, some are smoking even more than 20. So the idea is that a variable should have the capacity to vary when we move from one person to the other person or from one context to the other person. Now, at the same time, there is another variable in this theory or in this statement that is health. As we know that health of people vary from one another. So these are two variables. Now, if we draw these variables like this in a theoretical framework, because we are just describing a theory using these two variables. Now, if you try and make a sentence out of this diagram, we will get this sentence. Smoking has a negative relationship with health. So now in this case, health is dependent on smoking, but only in this case. Therefore, we can say that health is a dependent variable. And in this case, which we are discussing, Smoking is the independent variable. Because why? We are trying to say that smoking has a negative relationship with health. That means in this case, health is dependent on smoking. So health, when it is dependent on something, we call this variable as a dependent variable. And in this case, in this theoretical framework, in this theory, smoking will be known as independent variable. 
So these are the two types of variables. One is known as the dependent variable and the other is known as the independent variable. You can also have one idea that uh, the arrow is always going from an independent variable towards the dependent variable. So therefore, health, we can say, is a dependent variable and smoking in this case is going to be an independent variable. I am insisting on in this case only because there might be a case in which smoking is a dependent variable or health is a dependent vari independent variable. So uh, you just have to look at the theoretical framework to understand that what kind of variables are these variables. Now let's just discuss another example which, which says that training has a positive relationship with performance. That if you train your employees, they, after getting some training, they have uh, the capacity to perform well. So that means we can say that training leads to good performance, or we can also say that training has a positive relationship with performance, or we can also say that performance in this case is dependent on training, which means in this theory, in this case, in this statement, performance is a dependent variable and training is an independent variable. Now, here comes a little twist and let's see what if there is an argument that training does not directly influence performance, but there's a meet, some kind of medium or some kind of intervening thing which is happening. Now, in this case, the argument, the new argument is that training actually leads to learning and then learning leads to performance. So what is happening here is that first we were saying that training has a direct relationship with performance. There might be a relationship, but there's new argument that if you get training and suppose you do not learn anything, you will not be performing anything. So, this argument supports another type of variable which is known as the intervening or a mediating variable. You are calling it a mediating variable. Why? Now, if we just try and define a mediating variable, it means that mediating variable is affected by the independent variable and then it affects the dependent variable. So it is something which is intervening or mediating between the independent and the dependent variable. So variables which are in between independent and dependent variable are known as mediating variables. Now let's take this example a little further and we say there's another argument that Training will only cause learning if there is a presence of a good quality of a trainer. So we have added another variable which says that because of this variable, which is quality of the trainer in this case, because of this variable or because of the presence or absence of this variable, the relationship between these two variables will change or this variable has the capacity to change the relationship between two variables. Now these kind of variables are known as the moderating variables. Why? Because just because of their presence or absence, the relationship between independent and dependent variables change. So such variables are known as moderating variables. Now, one thing that we want to make clear here is that the main difference between the mediating and the moderating is that mediating is involved in the transaction 
mediating is involved in the dissemination of the effect which means that training leads to learning and then learning leads to performance but at the same time the moderators moderators are variables which are known uh, as that because of their presence or absence the relationship between two variables change so uh, let's take another example to discuss this thing now let's suppose there is a father who's the earning source in the family and he gives some pocket money or some uh, some money to the mother and then mother out of this hundred dollars gives some money to the child so in this case mother is acting as a mediator because she is taking money or she is being given money by the father and then the same path continues and she gives money to the child so in this case she is acting as a mediator now let's look at another example now father is directly trying to give money to the child now there is only a relationship between father and a child but when the mother is present the father gives the child 50 rupees or 100 rupees but when mother is not present father and child has a different relationship in terms of pocket money so here just because of the mother's presence or absence the relationship between father and a child changes so here she's acting as a moderator here in the above, above example she is acting as a mediator because she is being affected by the father and then in return she is affecting the child but in the lower example the presence or absence of mother changes the relationship between father and a child so this can be another simple example of understanding mediation and moderation now let's go to uh, the other example and in this example we are also going to learn a few more concepts which is indirect effect the direct effect and the total effect so when we will be analyzing mediation in our uh, Andrew Hayes uh, process macro these things will be very important these concepts are going to be very important to understand and interpret the mediation analysis now for example father gives some pocket money to mother and out of which mother gives 50 rupees to the child now here mother is acting as a mediator yes and at the same time father is also giving some money to the child say father is giving 15 dollars directly to the child without the involvement of mother so 15 15 dollars are given to the child directly directly by the father to the child but these 50 dollars are also coming from father's pocket but th these 50 uh, dollars or rupees are being mediated by the mother so father is giving it to mother and then mother out of his pocket uh, her pocket money is giving to the child so in this case please try and understand the difference between the indirect and the direct effect so the father giving money to the child directly can be known as the direct effect or we can say that independent variable has some impact directly on the dependent variable that is known as the direct effect but there are also path that is being established through some other variable 
this path can be known as mediation path or indirect effect now where is the money coming from from the father's pocket but these 50 dollars are going to the child indirectly not directly indirectly so this effect or this path of this uh, model is known as the indirect effect and this path which is a direct path is known as the direct effect now as you can see we have this uh, explanation here indirect effect is dollar 50 why because it is going indirectly to the child how much total pocket money the child is going to have obviously 65 dollars why because 50 rupees are being given by the mother to the child and 15 rupees are being given to the child directly by the father so what is the total effect total effect is equal to the indirect and direct effect which means 50 plus 15 is equal to 65 so these concepts are going to be very important when we will be uh, analyzing our mediation model in andrew hayes process so i hope you've understood the difference between the indirect effect the direct effect and the total effect now let's uh, talk about this uh, process macro a little actually this is a a macro is something that is that you can say is the add-on of something like we have different macros for excel the same way we have different uh, macros for spss and this is a macro that has been developed by andrew and hayes and you can install this macro into your spss which we are going to learn in our next part of the video and then it gives you some very complicated analysis in a very very simple tabulation so let's look at uh, what are the uh, our uh, example of uh, these uh, models so process models if if we can just look at the process model now these andrew and hayes they have given different models and based on your theoretical framework you need to apply that model in the SPSS. For example, if you just want to check simple moderation, there is X, which is independent variable, and there's a Y, which is a dependent variable, and there is one M, which means there is a moderator. So if you want to simply check the moderation analysis, you will be using model one of the Andrew Hayes process. Now, as we go further, we are going to see that there is a model one an explanation of model one now there is a model two so if you have two moderators in the same path of iv and dv which means independent and dependent variable you will be using model two then if you have a, a diagram which looks like this this is known as moderated moderation we will talk about this in in our other video but if you have a model like this you will be using model 3 and if you have for example this simple mediation you will be using model 4 for our uh, this part of the video we will only be using model 1 and model 4 because we will we are only interested in checking simple moderation and simple mediation but if less for the sake of understanding if we go further and see there are number of more different models based on which for example this is a model then there is going to be another model for example this model is used for sequential mediation and you can have as many mediators as you want for example here you have two mediators so like this you have number of models but it depends on what kind of model you're trying to test and this thing for example this is known as moderated mediation we will also talk about this one in some other video so there are about 70 plus models in which depending upon what kind of theoretical framework you want to uh, test you can use andrew hayes models and you can test your analysis so this is this is about uh, the uh, process macro